and the Delta variant of SARS-CoV-2 caused havoc in April and May 2021. It was termed as a variant of concern by the government. It gave rise to newer symptoms such as high-grade fever, diarrhea, severe lung infection followed by long COVID and post-COVID complications. Many recovered COVID-19 patients face new or existing symptoms called long COVID. It can sometimes last for months. A new study suggests that long COVID cases are on the rise. We'll discuss the findings of the study in the next couple of minutes. I'm Nidhi Kumar and you're watching Science Time. A show that brings to you the best that science offers from exciting developments in science and technology to futuristic solutions. And let's move on to story number one. Well, the World Health Organization describes long COVID as a persistent state of ill health and adds that there is no agreed international definition for it. Symptoms include fatigue and headaches, recurring respiratory illness, persistent body ache, temporary cognitive distress or brain fogging, palpitations or irregular heartbeats, inflammation in multiple body parts, formation of blood clots resulting in a stroke. Some people also experience depression and anxiety. Further, some patients also suffer from severe post-COVID complications like mucormycosis and secondary infections. A new study suggests that this has started to happen four times more than before the second wave of COVID-19 in India. And post-COVID complications like falling oxygen levels and lung fibrosis that manifested even after eight weeks or more of testing positive are being seen in a lot more numbers than ever before. Furthermore, post-COVID complications like chronic fatigue syndrome and myalgia are reported four times more in women than in men. At the same time, complications like lung fibrosis are found to be more severe in men. Long COVID can result from mild, moderate or severe COVID-19 infections. It is not very clear why this happens and who is more susceptible to it. Researchers are continuously striving to find out more to prevent or better cure the syndrome. So let's move on to story number two. And as reported by the World Economic Forum's Global Risks Report, the top three global risks are failure to take action on climate change, biodiversity loss, infectious diseases, the need to control production and therefore emissions is at the highest at present. We can no longer continue to produce for the profit of a few, thereby producing in excess. Instead, we need to cater to the needs of many, thereby growing only as much as necessary. And in 2015, the world leaders came together for an ambitious commitment in Paris to fight climate change and keep the world on the path of a maximum of 1.5 Celsius global increase in temperature. Following this, businesses have aligned their plans and commitments to this vision. Companies with a combined revenue of over 11.4 trillion US dollars are now pursuing net zero emissions by the end of the century. And a majority of these companies aim to achieve this target by 2050. And last week, the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity Secretariat released its first draft of the framework inviting input and engagement from all sectors of society. Businesses have a significant role in fighting biodiversity loss and ensuring continued ecosystem services such as carbon sequestration, clean water, food security, etc. Governments worldwide have provided approximately $530 billion per year in public subsidies and market price support for farmers. Still only 15% of these incentives support sustainable outcomes, while the majority may spur the overuse of fertilizers, among other perverse effects. Target 18 of the framework commits governments to redirect, repurpose, reform or eliminate incentives harmful for biodiversity in a just way by at least 500 billion US dollars per year across sectors. This may also have a myriad of negative impacts on vital sectors such as agriculture, especially in agrarian economies such as India. These sensitive issues will have to be addressed while keeping in mind a clear target of reducing emissions, controlling pollution to protect biodiversity, preventing the spread of diseases on the whole and ensuring the sustenance of the human race. Now let's move on to story number three. 
At the ocean is a mysterious place. Researchers say we know more about the moon than we do know about our deep oceans. And the deep oceans are home to many creatures that are either difficult to spot or are still awaiting discovery. In a recent expedition, researchers identified new marine species and deep sea organisms on nine sea mounts that we explored for the first time in the remote Phoenix Islands archipelago in the southern Pacific Ocean. During this 34-day expedition, the team caught sight of an elusive sea creature, the glass octopus. These creatures are rarely spotted, so scientists had to learn about the animal by studying specimens found in the gut contents of the predators. The glass octopus has an almost see-through skin. Its only visible features are the optic nerve, eyeballs and digestive tract. The creature was first discovered in 1918 and its scientific name is Vitralil Donella Richardi. According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the glass octopuses are estimated to live for about 2 to 5 years. The ocean's aphotic zone where sunlight doesn't reach is home to these octopuses. These creatures have an elongated eye. And this unusual eye shape could be an adaptation that minimizes the silhouette of the eye as seen from below and is a part of the animal's camouflage strategy, an earlier study suggested. The expedition to Phoenix Island's archipelago bore more fruitful results. For instance, the team captured the footage of a rare whale shark, the largest fish alive. These creatures can grow as large as 20 meters and are found in all the world's tropical oceans. And Wendy Smith, the co-founder of the Smith Ocean Institute said, and I quote, the ocean holds wonders and promises we haven't even imagined, much less discovered, unquote. The researcher added that the expeditions like this teach us why we need to increase our efforts to restore and better understand marine ecosystems everywhere because the great chain of life that begins in the ocean is critical for human health and well-being. And with that friends, this is a wrap on this edition of Science Times. Stay with us every Friday at 9pm. Keep watching India Science. Namaskar.